Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Ken. Oh. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and that was Gideon who was barking in there as well. We apologize to anybody that uh, we offend when our dogs bark. We have nine pit bulls, and they, they keep us very active and keep us very um, on our toes. This is a book we're reading. Guys, this is, I think, part seven of our Traditions of Men series that we have, and it is a very good book series. This is a rewrite of a very corrupted book. Miss Nicole put this together and put it out under Yah Scriptures. And so, <clears throat> in the beginning, we have learned all sorts of things. And guys, I would like to refer you to the uh, previous downloads and the previous videos that we've done. They will all be um, in the description below. And so, what you will find in parts one through six already is all of this down to page 80 right here. <clears throat> and so, we are heading in to the actually 80 uh, 111 is where we're at so the fourth commandment is what we're on today so let us begin into the fourth commandment and let us see what it says gentlemen how you guys are good is everyone good yep okay so let us begin and see if we can do this <clears throat> the fourth commandment remember the shabbat day to good ocean six days you labor and shall do all your work but the seventh day is the shabbat of yahuwah your elohim you do not do any work you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days, Yahuwah made the Shemaim and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore, Yahuwah Barak, the Sabbath day, and Kadosh it. The seventh day is without question what we now call Saturday. It was named by the Romans in honor of Saturnus, one of the many false gods borrowed from the Greeks, Cronus who inherited them from the Babylonians, etc. Saturn is etymology, etymologically linked to Satyr, the goat god, synonymous with Satan. And so if you look at this goat god, <clears throat> now, the, the Satanists have a, um, they have a goat god, and they, they actually have a different one as well. They, they have one that they call the Baphomet, um, and the Baphomet looks remarkably like this, except it's half man and half woman. And so the Baphomet actually has breasts, um, whereas this uh, goat uh, thing does not. And so this, this deity or the deity they, they called is Saturnus. Okay, um, Saturn, uh, let's continue on. Um, the symbol of Saturn left is the cross, symbol of the sun and sickle the grim reaper. As believers, we should not even speak this word in obedience to Exodus 23, 13. Also Joshua 23, 7 and Psalms 16, 4. To call the day that Yahuwah blessed after a false god is a dishonor to him. In over a hundred languages of the world, the seventh day, Saturday is still called the Sabbath. In Italy, it is called Sabato. In Spain, Sabado. In Portugal, Sabado. In Russia, Sabata. In Poland, Sabata. All of these mean Sabbath or rest day in their various languages. In Hebrew, the language of our Messiah and the heavenly messengers, it is called Shabbat. It is a verifiable historical fact that the Roman Catholic Church in the institution is the institution responsible for the change from the seventh day to the first day, Sunday, originally named Dia Solus in honor of the sun god. So here we are. Here's Sol. Um, let's continue on this. Dias in honor of the sun god Sol. Though this world's traditions are of no importance to us as followers of Yahuwah. So let's examine his word to find the truth. Your word is truth. John 17, 17. And then we have in scriptures, these pictures right here, we have day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven. And this is all the things that our creator made on these days. And so the seventh day he rested and he said, we should rest. Okay, continuing on. In the beginning, thus the Shemaim and the earth were completed and all their array. And on the seventh day, Elohim completed his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And Elohim Barak the seventh day in Kadoshit, because on it he rested from all his work, which Elohim in creating had made. And that was Genesis 2, 1 through 3. Note, in the beginning, there were no Jews or Gentiles, only children of Yahuwah. So those who claim the Shabbat to be a Jewish thing are misinformed. And I would like to go a little bit further into this. And um, we didn't even have the... The, the religion of Judaism till way later 
and you didn't even have a <coughs> somebody that was called um, Judah, right? It was the fourth son of Jacob, and his name was Judah. And so he, when we say Jews, we're only saying one tribe of the 12 tribes of Yisrael. Okay, now the fourth commandment. Exodus 20, 8 through 11 says this. And you speak to the children of Yisrael saying, my Shabbatoth you are to guard by all means, for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations to know that I, Yahuwah Kadosh you, and you shall guard the Shabbat, for it is Kodesh to you. Everyone who profanes it shall certainly be put to death, for anyone who does work on it, that being shall be cut off from among his people. Six days work is done, and on the seventh is the Shabbat of rest, Kodesh to Yahuwah. Everyone doing work on the Shabbat day shall certainly be put to death. Remember, this is, the, is one of the Ten Commandments written in stone by the finger of Elohim. Then we have uh, the hand of Elohim writing stuff in stone with fire. and That looks pretty cool. That's a good picture. Okay, that's mystical. She's our picture lady. Okay, Ezekiel 20, 12 through 16. And I also gave them my Shabbatoth to be a sign between them and me, to know that I am Yahuwah who makes them Kadosh. But the house of Yishri rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not walk in my laws, and they rejected my right rulings, which if a man does, he shall live by them. And they greatly profaned my Shabbatoth. Then I said, I would pour out my wrath on them in the wilderness to consume them. But I acted for my name's sake, not to profane it before the Gentiles, before whose eyes I had brought them out. And I myself also lifted my hand in an oath to them in the wilderness, not to bring them into the land which I had given them, flowing with milk and honey, the splendor of all lands, because they rejected my right rulings and did not walk in my laws, and they profaned my Shabbatoth. These scriptures make it very clear how serious Yahuwah treats the violation of his Shabbat and laws. It should serve as a reminder to us all. The blessings to the Gentiles. This comes out of Isaiah 56, 6 through 7. Also the sons of the foreigner who join themselves to Yahuwah to serve him and to love the name of Yahuwah to be his servants, all who guard the Shabbat and not profane it and hold fast to my covenant. Them I shall bring to my Kadesh mountain and let them rejoice in my house in pr of prayer. The Sabbath is for those who wish to be grafted into Israel. Exodus 31, 16 through 17 says this, And the children of Israel shall guard the Shabbat, to observe the Shabbat throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. Between me and the children of Israel. it is a sign forever. <clears throat> Some get confused over who Israel actually is. But as we see in Isaiah in the verse preceding, Israel is those who hold fast to his covenant. See also Hosea 2.23, Romans 10.12, and Galatians 3.28. The next chapter is who is Yisrael. Notice the Sabbath is a sign forever. Psalms 89.34 says this, I shall not profane my covenant, neither would I change what has gone out from my lips. Ezekiel 20.12 says this, And I also gave them my Shabbatoth to be a sign between them and me, to know that I am Yahuwah who makes them Kadosh. Ezekiel 20.20 20 says this, and Kadosh my Shabbat off, and they shall and they shall be a sign between me and you to know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. The Sabbath being a sign is indicative, ind indicative that others should be able to recognize this observance in an obedient believer. This is what it means to be Kodesh. We are different from all the rest of the world who follow after traditions of men. The commands. It's easy to say I honor the Sabbath, but let's examine the specific commands pertaining to the keeping of the Sabbath. Nehemiah 9.14 says this, And you made known to them your Kodesh Shabbat, and, your, and you commanded them commands and laws and tore it by the hand of Moshe, your servant. Nehemiah 9.14. So we have day one, which they equate, equate that to Sunday. Day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, and a Shabbat. Right? Um, there's no work to be done, right? It's a day of rest. It's a day of rest for everybody. Okay, and this comes out of Exodus 28 through 10. This, remember, the Shabbat day to Kadosh it. Six days you labor and shall do all your work. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahuwah, your Elohim. You do not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. It's also reiterated in Exodus 31, 14 and 15 and Leviticus 23, 3. This is the most serious aspect of honoring the Sabbath is that it's repeated so many times and is one of the commandments that carries the death penalty for infraction. Exodus 35, 2. Work is done for six days, but on the seventh day it shall be Kodesh to you, a Shabbat of rest to Yahuwah. 
anyone doing work on it is put to death. Numbers 15, 32 through 36 says this, And while the children of Yisrael were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering sticks on the Shabbat day. And those who found him gathering sticks brought him to Moshe and to Aaron and to all the congregation and said to Moshe, The man shall certainly be put to death. All the congregation stoning him with stones outside the camp. And all the congregation brought him outside the camp and stoned him with stones, as Yahuwah commanded. Moshe, and he died. Okay, next, carrying on. These verses make it clear that there's no such thing as a minor infringement, and even light work is prohibited. Another infringement, and even uh, as a minor, another, <clears throat> let me start that over. These verses make it clear there's no such thing as a minor infringement, and even light work is prohibited. Another implication is that the offender was intending to make a fire with the wood, something that is also prohibited in the Torah. No cooking. Cooking is a daily chore that Yahuwah mercifully commanded a rest from, to do all your preparation in advance for the Shabbat of rest. <clears throat> Exodus 16, 23. And he said to them, This is what Yahuwah has said. Tomorrow is a rest, a Shabbat, Kodesh to Yahuwah, to which you bake, to that which you bake, bake, and that which you cook, cook, and lay up for yourselves all that is left over to keep it until morning. Cooking or baking is a daily chore, just another form of work, which, as we have read, is considered a serious breach of the Sabbath rest. Exodus twelve sixteen says this, And on the seventh day you have a Kodesh gathering. No work at all is done on them. Only that which is eaten by every being, that alone, is prepared by you. This verse pertains to the festival of unleavened bread, but to find some light food preparation is permissible. Light no fire. Do not kindle a fire in any of your dwellings on the Shabbat day. Exodus 35, 3. There is some debate about what kindling a fire entails. Some even hold that igniting a spark in a combustion engine, fire up an engine, is a violation of this law. But the question is moot in, fact of the, in light of the fact that travel is forbidden on Shabbat. It is also common sense that just because we have electric ovens and microwaves today does not mean that we can contrive the no-cooking law. Limited travel. See, because Yahuwah, be, see, because Yahuwah given you the Shabbat, therefore he has given you bread for two days on the sixth day. Let each one stay in his place. Do not let anyone go out of his place on the seventh day. So there you go. For all of us that are, all of you guys who are going into a church on a Sunday or traveling or going places, that wasn't meant what it's meant to be. The Israelites dwelt in tents and their tribal groups up to a kilometer square, their place. And it is evident that the Jews were still keeping this law at Yahushua's time based on the verse below. Acts 1.12 says this, Then they went back to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Shabbat day's journey. Some use Matthew 12, 13 as an excuse to go to a fellowship or, uh, or wherever because Yahushua is reported to have walked through grain fields to a house congregation, then to the sea, then back to the house. Most people fail to realize that the villages at this time were not much bigger than a kilometer across and fields were nowhere near as big as today. Yahushua even warned about travel in the end of days and pray that your flight does not take place in winter or on the Shabbat. The scripture not only implies that there is a restriction on travel, but confirms the command from the Torah. Turn from self-pleasing. If you do not turn back your foot from the Shabbat, if you do not turn back, let me try that again. If you do not turn back from your foot from the Shabbat, from doing your pleasure on my Kodesh day and shall call the Shabbat a delight, the Kodesh day of Yahuwah esteemed and shall esteem it, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then you shall delight yourself in Yahuwah. Isaiah 58, 13, I guess it's all part of that. And I shall cause you to ride on the heights of the earth and feed you with the inheritance of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of Yahuwah has spoken. This is by far the most defining scripture regarding the Sabbath. If any task or entertainment we undertake on the Sabbath day is purely self-pleasing, then Yahuwah will not delight in us. If these commands Yahuwah gave in regarding to honor his Sabbath sound burdensome and boring, then maybe you ought to examine your heart, whether you love Yahuwah, or your own pleasures more. Sabbath in the new heavens. A prophecy from the book of Isaiah reads this. Isaiah 66, 23 and 24. For as the new Shemaim and the new earth that I make stand before me, declares Yahuwah, so your seed and your name shall stand. And it shall be that from new moon to new moon and from Shabbat to Shabbat, all flesh shall come to worship before me, declares Yahuwah. And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, and their fire not be a quench, and they shall be repulsive to all flesh. Okay. Scripture informs us that the Sabbaths and festivals, Hebrew is called Moedim, are shadows of things to come. Colossians 2.17. 
So it only stands to reason that the Sabbath will be honored in the new heavens and new earth. New Testament Sabbath. In the renewed covenant, there's no indication of the Sabbath being ignored. On the contrary, we find a number of examples of Sabbath keeping. Yahushua and the people of Israel all observe the Sabbath. Luke 4.16 says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And according to his practice, he went into the congregation on the Shabbat day and stood up to read. And then Luke 23.56 says this, And having returned, they prepared spices and perfumes, and they rested on the Shabbat according to the command. Paul and the apostles kept the Sabbath. And when the Yahudim went out of the congregation, the Gentiles begged to have these words spoken to them. The next Shabbat. And when the meeting of the congregation had broken up, many of the Yahudim and the worshiping converts followed Shaul and Barnaba, who speaking to them were urging them to continue in the favor of Elohim. And on the next Shabbat, almost all the city came together to hear the words of Yahuwah. Acts, uh, in Acts 17, 2 says this, And according to his practice, Shaul went in unto them, and for three Shabbatoth was reasoning with them from the scriptures. Acts 18, 4 says this, And he was reasoning in the congregation every Shabbat, and won over both Yahudim and Yawanites. Because of mistranslation, the following verses caused much confusion to some. Colossians 2, 16, Let no one therefore judge you in eating or in drinking, or in respect of a festival, or a new moon, or a Shabbat, which are a shadow of what is to come, but the body of Hamashiach. And I will put a, a reader's note into this that the, this is taken out of context simply because people don't realize that Paul was talking to people who were new converts when he was talking to them. He was talking to people that had gone over and they started keeping the Shabbat. They started keeping all of the appointed times and all of the pagan people, all their heathen friends were sitting there and they were judging them, right? They were saying, hey, why are you keeping this? Why are you doing this? Why, what's up with that? So it has nothing to do with telling people um, that you can't keep the Shabbat or that we don't need to because this is the default Christian conundrum right here that clearly says that, pe that people will say, um, we don't have to keep the Sabbath because we don't want somebody to judge us because what we're eating and what we're drinking. So they'll eat unclean food, they'll, they'll worship on the wrong day, and they will do what they believe is right in their own heart. Okay, continuing on. This verse states that the body of Messiah are the only ones to judge in these matters, but it's confusing in Bible translations with the added word of is. But the body is of Christ in the King James. This changes the whole meaning of the scripture and last sentence because of an irrelevant statement. Another scripture in Bibles that has been poorly or deliberately mistranslated reads, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Hebrews 4, 9. The word rest is sabatimos in Greek and literally means Sabbath, keeping confirming all scriptures. So Hebrews 4, 9 says, So there remains a Shabbat keeping for the people of God. Yish, right, or for people of Elohim. Okay, so I guess that is it. That is the reading on the Sabbath. We hope that everybody out there has a good day. We hope that you guys are reading along with us. There is a free download of this PDF in the description below. And if you guys would like to purchase this book, it is available on Amazon in color and also black and white. And if you guys would like to help ship this particular book into our brothers and sisters in chains, please email me jboss008 at gmail.com because we would like to get a big order of these in to our brothers and sisters in chains. And if you guys can help us do that, we would really appreciate it. So thank you guys very, very much. Have a wonderful day and we're out. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom.